Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning and Marine. In this video, I'm going to install an intake manifold on a 5.7 liter Merc Cruiser V8 engine. Uh, the engine is actually going in a Volvo Penta boat. I just I call them Merc Cruiser. They're all the same, Merc Cruiser, Volvo Penta. It's all General Motors engines. So um, the first thing I do when I prep an engine for an intake manifold is I make sure I wipe down all the surfaces where the intake manifold uh, sealant, uh, gasket sealant is going to go. This ledge right here and the ledge on the back right there do not have rubber seals. Do you use the the uh, silicone gasket maker to create this create the rubber seal on the ends? That's a, a difference from the, what they used to do back in the '70s and '80s, where they had little holes in here that a rubber gasket fit in. Well, the rubber gaskets always got squeezed out and end up leaking anyway. So this the uh, silicone system is much better, lasts longer. So at this time, I've already wiped down all the surfaces with acetone. I don't want to touch with my fingers and get my oil on there. So, um, but I wiped down all that across here, all here, around here, across here, and around there with acetone to clean up the uh, oil and stuff. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and apply the uh, gaskets and the sealant and get ready to put the intake manifold on. Continue with the intake manifold installation on this 5.7 liter Mercruiser V8. Um, I've, I've made these studs. I took the uh, some uh, bolts from another project or another engine and I cut the heads off of them to make studs or alignment guides. So when we lower this intake manifold on this engine, these studs will keep the intake manifold going straight down onto the gaskets. When you put a, a bead of gasket material right here, gasket sealant here and on here, if you lower the intake on it and it's too far out or too far back and you have to shift it over, it completely messes up that bead of sealant. So you'll have to take it off and do it over again. So these guides here will help in a lot in that regard. Um, one thing I want to comment on is these, these are what's called Vortec heads. These are 5.7 Vortec heads. They're very uh, sought after heads. They make 30 horsepower more than the other heads, just bolting them on. And uh, you can tell a Vortec head because it has eight bolts, or excuse me, four bolts per side. There's one here, one there, one there, and one there. Your previous, and Vortec heads came out in 1996. So anything before 1996 will have 12 holes. We'll have one here, one here, actually one here, and one here, closer here. One there, one there, and one there, or excuse me, one right there, one right there, and then the same on the side. So you got 12 holes total. And that's how you can tell the difference between a Vortec and a standard cylinder head. So. The intake, obviously the intake we're putting back on this engine is a Vortec intake manifold. It came off a five liter Vortec head, so it's the same bolt hole pattern it fits, the 5.7. So if you're ever upgrading from a older 5.0 or 5.7 to Vortec, and if your engine is before 1995, you're gonna have the wrong intake manifold. So you're gonna have to swap intake manifolds as well as the heads. Just uh, and then intake manifolds run about $250. So, well, for a car, I don't know what they run for boats. Boats, I'm sure, a lot higher, but um, I would just run a car intake on it, no problem. All right, at this time, we're going to install the intake manifold, and I'm going to set it in place. We've got the guides. There's four studs we uh, bolts. We cut the heads off of to make guides. So I'm going to use that as the guys to mount this thing down. Um, I put a bead of silicone across the front, across the back. I wiped around all the water ports on the heads. I don't put it on the gasoline ports because I'm not as worried about those leaking. It's the water that's going to destroy the engine if it leaks. So here we go. Perfect. So those guides helped me get it in the right spot the first time. And this is time. I'm going to pull the guides back out. And then we'll put the real bolts in and start torquing down. And uh, I'll show you the, uh, the torque sequence and the, and the torque level when I get to that stage. Okay, at this time I'm going to uh, tighten up the intake manifold bolts, and you do it in a, you do it in a sequence, and you do it in three stages. So the first stage, or the first tightening sequence, is at 27 inch pounds. I have a 27 inch, uh, 20, uh, inch pound torque wrench, and I've got it set for 27 inch pounds. So the sequence is one. This is the first bolt. There it is, right? You, could, you have to be careful because you can barely feel that 27 inch pounds. It's right there. Then you go to two. Right there. Yep, right there. Then three.
four. All right, then uh, four, then back to five. Then six. And seven. And eight. All right, there's eight. All right, um, there's a reason I didn't run these down with an impact driver or any kind of electric drill, because as you saw, the, it didn't take much torque to get these at the first stage, which was 27 inch pounds. I, I, I was barely turning and feeling a little bit of a click there. So you do not want to use a tool or any kind of uh, a battery operated tool to run these bolts down. You want to run them finger tight and then use your torque wrench to tighten them down. So that's what I'm about to do now. I'm going to the second stage and I've now got it set for 106 inch pounds. And again, I'm going back to number one. Um, I've now tightened all eight bolts in the second stage. I wanted to mention that uh, obviously the most important thing you got to do is make sure this intake manifold is the front is towards the front of the engine. It will go on backwards and you will really screw yourself up. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was the, um, let's see, you want to do this, you want to get these bolts uh, installed and tightened down and torqued in all three stages as fast as possible because you don't want the sealant to dry. You want it to, you don't want it to set. So it sets pretty fast. So you want to get these all this entire intake all be prepared, have your bolts clean, have everything ready to go, and torque them down as soon as you set the intake down so that the, your, your silicone doesn't have a chance to skin over and dry. You want it to be wet the entire time it's installed. And it's okay for it to ooze out like that. That's a good thing because it means you had enough in there and you're squeezing it out. So it's a good, it's a wider, good footprint of a sealant in there. And it's doing the same on the back too. So I'm about to go to the third stage, which is 11 foot pounds, which is uh, 11 times 12, which is, um, I think what, 120, 132, 132 inch pounds. So I'll set my torque gauge or torque wrench for 132 and finish up the third stage. All right, at this time, I'm gonna do the third pass on this intake manifold for a 5.7 Mer Cruiser. And the setting is now um, 11 foot pounds, which is 132 inch pounds. So I'm gonna start with bolt number one. And you see I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this ring. And that's it. So the reason you don't torque these very high is uh, one, you don't want to crush this plastic. There's a plastic intake manifold gasket in there and you don't want to crush that. That's probably the main reason. Um, but the other reason you don't want to squeeze out your seals too bad either. So this intake manifold is now installed and we're going to sit, we're going to let it dry. Um, I've got to peel the paint off. Where I, I did paint some of this intake manifold because it had corroded. So we painted over the corrosion with some primer and the primer matched the color of the uh, manifold already. So I didn't bother to uh, paint it anymore. But I'm going to peel the, the uh, tape off and we'll get ready to put the rest of the accessories on this engine. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video beneficial, please subscribe to my channel.